Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 30. It's on neutralization reactions or we sometimes refer to these as acid-base reactions. And to really understand it, you have to understand one of the most abundant elements in the universe. 90% of atoms are actually hydrogen. Hydrogen is one proton and one electron. Remember the proton has a positive charge, electron has a negative charge. And so if we take away that electron, what are we left with? A proton. And so you'll hear these used interchangeably. A hydrogen ion, which is going to have a positive charge, or a proton. Those mean essentially the same thing. And they're both incredibly important when we're talking about neutralization reactions. And so water is amphoteric. And what that means is it can either act as an acid or a base. And more specifically, it can act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid or a Bronsted-Lowry base. What does that mean? Well, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is going to donate a proton to a base. In other words, the acid always donates the proton to the base. And this is the best definition uh, for what an acid and a base is. And so when, these, uh, when this proton is transferred, we call that a neutralization reaction. And so this only occurs in aqueous reactions. And we also have to be able to identify what's the acid, what's the base. In other words, what is this conjugate acid-base pair? And also using this definition, you should be able to figure out the strength of acids and bases, or at least what that strength means. And so water is really interesting on a number of different levels. But one of the reasons it's interesting is if you have enough water around water, it'll actually start to transfer protons. In other words, there's going to be a negative charge here and a positive charge on the proton. So sometimes one of those protons will actually move over. And so what you create is hydronium ion, which has a positive charge, and hydroxyl ion, which is going to have a negative. And so using the Bronsted-Lowry definition of what an acid and a base is, what we're doing is we're taking the acid in this case and the base and we're transferring a proton from the acid to the base. And so that's how we define what an acid or a base is. And what's interesting about water is it can serve both as an acid and a base. So where does this definition come from? Well there were two scientists, Bronsted in Denmark and Lowry in England, and they both kind of identified this at the same time. So they give them both credit when they named it. And so what you're doing is you're taking an acid and a base and you're transferring that proton from the acid to the base. And so another way to write it would be the acid which has the proton and then we're transferring that proton um, in this case to the base. And so we're taking an acid and a base, combining those together, this is called neutralization, and we're making a conjugate base and a conjugate acid. Now this is a reversible reaction. In other words, it can run in both directions. And that's why we have the arrow pointing both ways. And so an example of this could be acetic acid with water. And so if we have acetic acid and water, what we can do is we can actually take that proton from the acetic acid and then we can donate it to the water itself. In this case then acetic acid is the acid and water would be the base. And so what's interesting about water is it can serve as both an acid and a base. And so take a moment for just a second and figure out, is water an acid here or a base? Is it an acid here or is it a base? And so you have to go back to that definition. All we say an acid is is something that's donating a proton. And all we say a base is is something that's receiving it. And so in this first reaction, we're taking hydrochloric acid and water. Have you figured out which one it is? Well, the acid is going to be the hydrochloric acid. The base is going to be the water. The water is receiving that proton, and so it's the base. And so what we're doing is we're losing that proton from the, the hydrochloric acid, and that's making a conjugate base chloride. And we're gaining that electron, or excuse me, gaining that proton in the water, and we're making a conjugate acid. So if we look down here, we've got ammonia and water. In this case, the water serving as an acid because it's donating the proton and who's receiving it is going to be the ammonia. And so that's creating a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. And so when we're talking about strong acids or strong bases, what does that really mean? Well, let's look at something that's completely strong. That's hydrochloric acid. And so if we add hydrochloric acid to water, it's going to, it's going to completely break apart. In other words, all the protons are going to break apart. All the chlorine ions are going to break apart. And so we call this a strong acid because the arrow you can see is all running in one direction. Now this proton doesn't just float around. It's going to quickly combine with water to make hydronium. You don't just have free protons inside there. But this would be a strong acid. If we look at something that's a medium acid, that would be acetic acid. So we're going to be 
transferring protons to the water, but we're also going to be moving those back to the acid itself. So this would be arrow in both directions. Or if we were to look at bicarbonate down here, bicarbonate, it's going to be more of that accepting of the proton. And so we call that a real weak acid. But we could also add the arrow on the other side. And so as we increase the strength of an acid, we're clearly decreasing the strength of a base and vice versa. And so that's the bronsted lowry model of, of what an acid and a base is and how we can figure it out in a neutralization uh, reaction. And so did you learn the following to identify what's the acid, what's the base, and figure out these pairs? Well, remember, just look for where the proton is going, where it's headed to, and that's going to tell you what's the acid, what's the base, and I hope that was helpful.